Welcome guys, my name is Ricardo Pereira and today I'm going to show you how to create shards. So don't leave and learn Mendix with me. Currently I have three different entities in this main model. So one request with the name and the value as attributes, another called additional data with the number of participants, at the type it's an integer. And the last entity, it's a shard data with two attributes, x value and y value, and this entity is not persistent. So to start, I'm going to show you how to create a shard based on the entity from the database. So just retrieving information from this request entity, and then I'm going to create some shards mixing the information from the request entity and also the additional data in just one that is called chart data. I also have prepared some pages. So I have here the request overview where you can see we have two different data grids, one for the request and another for the additional data. And here below, I already stored some spaces to place the charts. So here on the request charts based on the database, I'm going to use three charts as an example, and one space here for the charts with the mixed data from the requests and additional data. So let's start by creating a, a pie chart. So go to the toolbox and search for pie, and then drag and drop to your page this widget, double click, and here you will have access to different configurations. And the first one, it's data source, so where you can select the series. So click edit, select database, and then the entity. Now our case, we are going to choose the request and just click OK. To the series name, you can just click edit and add one parameter here. So you can just write one and then click in new attribute and select the name. Click OK, OK again, value attributes select, select the value, and for the sort attribute you can choose between the name or the value, in my case I'm going to select by the value, and here you can choose between the order, so it's ascending or descending, I'm going to keep ascending, apply color, you can also personalize some values for the color, so apply some classes, CSS classes. And then we have the general options, enable developer mode, so you will have a few extra options where you can see all the data retrieved, and also you can configure the way that you will visualize the chart. You can also choose if you want to show the legend or not, the radius of the pie chart, and you can also set the tooltip over text. So we can select again uh, one parameter. So write one and then create a new parameter. And here you can use, for example, the value. Click OK. OK again. And as you can see, we have different tabs. So you can also personalize the size of the widgets. So you can change between the width from percentage to pixels, so you can also personalize the height. You have different options here. When you click, you can do something. And in advance, you can change, for example, the characteristics of the columns, or you can just enable a team from a configuration folder. So you have many options here. You, you can set by yourself. And also the appearance tab, where you can apply some styling to the, the pie chart. Click OK. We can also add bar chart. So search for bar. And here you can just drag and drop to your page. Double click. And now as a data source, we have a few uh, different options. So select new. And here you can select between single series or multiple series for the data set. In our case, and just for this example, we are going to use multiple series. As a data source, we can select again 
our request entity click ok group by we can select one of the attributes so in this case if you have multiple requests with the same name they will be uh, grouped so select name series name we can do the same as before so create one parameter and then as select attribute name and because this is a horizontal bar chart we are going to use as x the value of the request and a y as a name here you also have a few aggregation functionalities so it defines how the data is aggregated when the multiple y values are available for the single x value so you can just do nothing count sum average so you have multiple options here just for this example we are going to keep it as a none and also the tooltip over text so we can also set one write one as a parameter and then select the value attributes and click ok in the general area we also have more configuration so you can enable again the developer mode and set a label for the x and y so and here you can write the caption uh, by your own for example by saying values for the x uh, value and then for the y axis you can uh, write name or you can use uh, also some parameters here you can select the bar format so if it's grouped stacked show legend and you can also change the grid lines from none to horizontal vertical above change the visibility with some condition and we also have another tabs so the dimensions it's very similar with uh, the configurations we saw on the pie chart so you here you can change the width and the height in the advanced tab you can also create some uh, custom configurations or use the enable in folder and at the end you can also use the default styling settings from mendix click ok and now just to finalize this database chart so we are going to also create a column chart so just search for it on the toolbar drag and drop into your page double click and here as you can see it's very similar with the bar chart we need to select a data source again we are going to select multiple series and then select the request entity click ok group by the name series name select one parameter so here you can set the name click ok but in this case for the x axis we are going to select the name attribute and for the y we are going to set the value as aggregation function we can just use the maximum value and for the tooltip over text we can set the value to show up so here you can create one parameter and select value click ok ok again for the general settings we have again the same uh, configuration so enable developer mode we can set this time to yes as a x value you can just choose one marquee name y i'm going to set value i'm going to disable the legend here read lines keep no and the column format i'm going to set as text and the other tabs it's the same that we already saw in the other charts so just click ok and run the server click to view app and then you can log in as you can see we don't have any information and that's why the shards are not appearing and to fix it we can just create a few request objects so in this case i'm going to set as a name test and the value five and click to save so 
with just one object we can already see uh, some shards here and now let's create another one so test 2 and set a value of 8 and save again as you can see while you are saving uh, the new objects the shards are changing um, and based on the values that you insert for the, each object you can see that we have different shards so when we put the mouse over the shard we can see a tooltip with the value of each object also here and and also on the column shard and then we also define some labels for the axis values so as you can see here for the y we have value but for the x we have name and also on the bar column we have the opposite so on the y we have name and values on the x now let's build a chart that makes information from two different entities i'm going to use a column chart as an example so search for it on the toolbox and drag and drop to your page and here double click select new just to follow the other examples i'm going to select multiple series data source and here instead of selecting the database i'm going to choose microflow click in select and let's create a new one let's call it the yes chart data underscore combine values and click OK. Click to show, click OK and OK again. Don't forget to give permissions to this uh, microflow. So go to properties and choose allowed rules. In my case, I only have one module rule, so it's user. Click OK. And here to start, you can go to your toolbox just retrieve all the values from the request entity go from database and select the request entity click click ok and then we can also retrieve all the information from the additional data entity so select click ok and now we are going to create another list just return the objects we are going to create so select the chart data as the list name we can change it to chart data list to show and click ok now we can create chart data uh, in a very different ways in my case and just to simplify i'm going to create a loop over the request list and click ok and now i'm going to drag and drop the create object action double click select entity as a shard data and now click new x value and i'm going to set the request name as the x value so name and click ok and now we need to get some data from the additional data list and because we don't have any uh, connection between these two entities we can just uh, get all the objects from it uh, you just get the heads of the list and then remove just to apply different different additional data objects for each chart data objects so um, to simplify we can just get some space inside the loop and here we are going to do a list operation to get the heads of the additional data list and we are going to use this value as a y value attribute so click in new y value get the new additional data slash number of participants and because this number of participants it's an integer we need to convert it to a string but if you already know the y value it's going to be always an integer you can already you can set it by default on the domain model in this case i'm going just to convert it using the function to string and then click ok 
click OK again. And now just to avoid to have the same object associated with other uh, shared data object, I'm going to remove it from the additional data list. So drag and drop a change list, connect with the object create. And here you can just go to the additional data, remove and select the new additional object. And to finish this logic, we just need to add one more action. That is the change list to add the new shard data to our to show list. So select add type, shard data list to show, and here select the new the new shard data object. Click OK and right click on the on the chart data list to show and set as a return value. Click to save our logic, go back to the overview page. And now you can just select the group by value. I'm going to group by by the X value. Here is name. We can also select the name or in this case the X value. So so click to select and then click OK. X axis, it's going to be X value. Y, it's going to be Y value. And here again, you can select one of these functions and you can set a tooltip over text. So create one parameter. I'm going to use the Y value. Click OK. In the general area, we can also set the axis labels. So name and value, show legend, read a column chart, a column format. So we are going to keep it all as it is and click OK. And now we can execute again the server. Click to view app. And now before we go to the chart, we need to create some additional data objects. So here uh, we can set the number of participants, for example, to five, create another object with nine. And now we can go to the chart and see that we have one object called test with the value five and another test two with the value nine that are different values that we can see on the other charts. In this case of the blue column, it's, it's the same. So let's change it just to make sure that everything is correct. Change to three, save. And now, and now the charts are different. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to leave the like and I see you soon. Bye bye.